uh, from Amor Kong Carnegie, um, animation director Luke Harper, and coordinator Jill McNulty. Um, the director of Plant Film could not make it today. Uh, so Ricardo, if you're out there, uh, we miss you, and uh, great film. <laughs> We'll give them a second to set up. They're like, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> so there are six like mics that you guys will have to share. Um, uh, did you? And <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's going first. Uh, yeah, whoever. There's a second. Move this on the chairs are gifts um, from our department chair, Shang Ching Mo, who is in the audience with us. Oh Thank you. Thank you happy Valentine's Day to you guys, and Thank happy jammies. Um, so, how are y'all doing today? I know I'm over here, but you can look at the camera. We've got, hi Twitch, hi YouTube. <laughs> Where is the camera? In the ether. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so my first question is, what was, so the process that the juniors go through um, in the beginning of the fall is a certain number of people pitch ideas, right? Um, what was that pitching process like, and how did you prepare for it? Anyone can go first. Well, we start from there and go, and go this way? Sure. Okay, that, that makes <laughs> sense. Um, uh, well, first off, like, each uh, person in the class like does their own pitch actually I think um, we each get like we each uh, have two pitches and like the class votes on which one they like the best and then when we uh, whittle it down we're like okay now we're gonna now the whole class is gonna vote out of all of these which one we are going to uh, work on together and that's how it works <laughs> cool, pretty huh? simple <laughs> how did you all prepare what was it like preparing for it um, well I just um for whatever, uh, I just pitched whatever ideas I liked and hope that everyone else liked them too, so. <laughs> I'll go. Um, so for Courtney's class, um, she wanted us to pick music and then anim make a pitch surrounding music. So um, I basically just want to wee star, looked up heavy metal, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, because I was, in a, I was in a mood. So I was like, I want heavy metal. So um, for probably like, four days straight, I had heavy metal, like, like the same song over and over <laughs> playing, like, uh, you know, so I was just kind of like thinking of an idea, I was like, oh, what am I going to do, but um, I was really fascinated with the idea for, of Rivals for a while, so I was like, oh, I like Rivals, and I was like, oh, um, I like D&Bs, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like, uh, what if, yeah. what if we had a rivalry where they're racing for their driver's license, so then I just pitched that. Hello. <laughs> uh, our process was, I think it went pretty smoothly and we all are very happy with our choice, but we had so many good pitches uh, and so, m so many great scores of music. Uh, I truly believe any one of them could have been a great film. Uh, but our director, uh, Ricardo, just had such a beautiful, sweet theme. And it's Valentine's Day themed. <laughs> and so it fits perfect for the jammies. And it wasn't intentional at first, but, you know, it just fits so perfectly. Like, it had to be destiny that we had to do this. Um, and I 
hope all of my classmates agreed that this was one of the better choices. And I think it came out great. <laughs> Um, so we cheated, actually. We uh, did cheat. Um, another known fact is that Sky Vandal is also a Valentine's Day film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the destruction of property. <laughs> so, um, uh, like Michelle said, uh, in Frank's class, each one of us had to come up with, we had to come up with two pitches each. We both pitched the two, and then uh, as a class, we'd narrow it down to one, and then we'd have 20 at the end, and we'd all vote on those 20. And uh, Sky Vandal won, but the idea came about because me and Ren uh, we're lived roommates. Together. We're roommates. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> we were we were shooting ideas back and forth, and uh, I was just scrolling on you know, Instagram or whatever endless content loop I had going on that day, and I saw that uh, in Los Angeles in the '90s there was a power outage that uh, swept the whole city, and 911 actually got a lot of calls for something weird in the sky. Turned it turns out. Uh, that was the Milky Way. <laughs> um, and you said... And upon uh, hearing this story, I was like, wow, that's a really great idea for a film. Um, <laughs> we both, like, bogged at each other. <laughs> you can't uh, see because of the mask, but, like... Just you can't... <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I guess I forgot to mention how I came up with my idea. Yeah. Um, okay, so basically, like, I'm... I, I guess it was, like, around Halloween, so, like, ghosts and everything, and it's like... And it's like, um, okay, so how do you kill something that's, how do you get rid of something that's already dead, you know? And, um, I, and I was like thinking, like, it's not just humans that can be ghosts, it's animals too. So it's like, what happens when an animal you don't want around is still around and you can't do anything about it? And then I was uh, thinking about the, um, you know, the, the old folk tale of like cats having nine lives, and it's like, oh, Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't kill. <laughs> it's like, oh, it makes sense if like another spirit is the only one that can like get rid of another spirit. That makes so much sense because you know we live in a physical world. We can't really deal with like the supernatural all that well. So that's how I came up with my idea. Oh, oh those are some amazing origin stories. <laughs> that's right. So anyway, uh, for Sky Vandal, Milo and I were both like, wow, this is a great idea. Should I pitch it? Should you pitch it? Should I pitch it? Um, in the end, Milo pitched it, um, but again, we cheated. So, you know, even though Milo pitched it, we kind of collaborated before we were supposed to. Yeah. But it turned out really well. It turned out, yeah. So, uh, lesson learned, uh, break the rules. Yeah. <laughs> and if everybody worried about the hospital generators, there are emergency generators. Don't worry. Literally the it's okay. <laughs> Women are allowed to cause crimes. <laughs> Well, they aren't, but that's the fun part. Well, yeah. Yeah. They're allowed on their own terms. They're all, yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Uh, so after your pitches were chosen, how were all the different roles? Because you saw like a ton of credits go by, and it's the entire class that pitches in. <laughs> um, but how were the roles chosen after you chose which story you were going to go with? Bridget did all the work, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'll grab this. Yeah, like, I came up, uh, I, I'm the dreamer, she's the planner. That's kind of how it is, so. Oh, my gosh. It was, we hopped on a Discord call, and we looked through all of our classmates, like, portfolios, and we were like, okay, how do we split this up? And it took, like, a while, because we were like, oh, no. Like, everyone's so talented. But, um, you know, <laughs> it's really hard to give everybody their first choice, because, uh, so many people want to be in storyboards. Like, everybody had storyboards. <laughs> it's, so it's real. It's real. Everybody was like, I want to be on storyboards. And so we're going through their portfolios, and we're like, well, you know, we can only have so many guys on the team. <laughs> so it's like, how am I going to break the bad news? But um, I think it worked out pretty well, because everybody on our team is a really strong player. So even if they didn't get their first choice, then at least their talents were very useful in whatever section they were placed in, so it was a tough choice, but it worked out for the best. <laughs> um, I have musical microphones yeah, right now. Yeah, musical microphones. Um, yeah, uh, so I feel like I went back to my theater kid roots. Um, <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, mm. It depends. It was an incredibly stressful thing because I, have, I had a class of just absolute rock stars, and I was just looking through all their portfolios like, 
oh my god. <laughs> um, Emmy and I would pull off someone and be like, oh, this is great, write them down. And then by the end of it, we would have eight people written down for the plot and go, okay, we have to rethink. Um, and, you know, instead of your class wanting storyboard artists, everyone wanted to be a character designer in our <laughs> class. So we had to send out an email and be like, uh, can we get a third choice? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. And it was like almost like magic because no matter where we put people, I feel like they just fit in perfectly. Um, and through the process, we also found that like people would jump from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing and it would be like, oh, this works perfectly. Like um, M. Serrano, for example, hopped on character design um, because she was a cleanup artist and then we were like, oh <laughs> crap, we have a million characters. And so we <laughs> needed her to help out. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it was a really tough process, but it was really worthwhile seeing the film come to fruition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the uh, beginning of the semester, we uh, all emailed our director, Ricardo, and said, please, Ricardo, give me my dream job. And um, <laughs> Ricardo made some difficult decisions, and uh, we all gained our roles. And as the weeks went on, uh, there was a lot of cross-pollination. We uh, ended up uh, recognizing moments in the story that needed elements that did we, we didn't foresee, so then someone would pick up a role. So that's why our credits became such an uh, overlapping uh, web of collaboration. And uh, I, uh, it, and it was interesting too, because some jobs didn't have anything to do for a good while. Uh, because of the, the pipeline. Like, uh, I was character designer, so I was doing that at the beginning. And then by the time characters were designed, I said, okay, uh, what do I do now? But then animation started, so my animation director job started. And uh, so it was, uh, it was nice to see. We had people who were not actively working in their roles yet step up and volunteer their time and service to help people uh, at their busiest. So it was a wonderful experience to have people serving each other. I'm gonna let you talk for this one because I swear to God, we should like frame your spreadsheet. Oh, like. <laughs> thank you. Um. We, d we did like pace around our living room, like stressed out businessmen after like that a is, stock crash or something. That is true. Without cigarettes though. Uh, so we, what happened? <laughs> um, we got home from class. Uh, we had a class from 9 a.m. to like 1 p.m. or yeah. something. Some um, obscene time. We went into our little New York apartment, hooked up Milo's laptop with an HDMI cable to our TV, pulled up the spreadsheet, and got to work. <laughs> um, and actually, surprisingly, in our class, um, there was a really nice spread of like the top choices that people wanted. Um, we had a very like wide array of people who wanted to be background designers and storyboard artists and character designers. So like, it was actually early like it was really awesome seeing everybody slot into their roles yeah uh, though i will say though everyone did want to be on storyboards that's true like, i don't know what it is it's like they're like it's a difficult job you people it's really hard especially uh, in frank's class you had to thumbnail the whole thing in a week yeah like i know frank's in here i'm saying it on purpose <laughs> <laughs> hi frank hi frank um yeah but you're, you're right it, it really uh it it surprised me how well it kind of spread. Um, and just like how Luke was saying, there's a lot of cross-pollination going on. We definitely had some moments. I, I think the, lay the layout team was only, was only four people, and oh, we yeah. had more than a lot, uh, more than a four-person amount of layouts. And we also had a lot of props and effects. Um, if you want a job in the animation industry, learn how to do prop design and effects. I swear, we, need, we, we needed four. We had like one person who signed up for it. Yeah, and all of you did a great job. Yes. Thank you so much. Seriously. That was, yeah, though, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it sounds like everyone kind of wore a lot of hats um, and it's such a collaborative process, but it sounds like you had a lot of fun along the way. Um, so my next question is, how did you balance how much work was done in the classroom versus outside? And how did you communicate outside the classroom with your peers when you weren't like, you know, in the fake studio <laughs> slash labs <laughs> working? The answer is you become a Discord moderator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> you, I have never, ever, ever in my life wanted to touch Discord except to play Mario Kart with my boyfriend. And um, then all of a sudden I was managing 20 people <laughs> and constantly go, 
going, hi, at everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to contact you for the 10th time today, but I just realized I forgot another sentence in my 30 paragraph thing I sent you earlier. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was a lot of like, okay, we're going to sit in class. Brooke, who was our animation director, and Emmy would sit in the front. And I would sit with a timer out, and I'd go, you've got two minutes for every shot. And then I would beep <laughs> and make them move forward because <laughs> we literally didn't have any time otherwise. And then after that, we'd be like, all right, we're going to communicate in Discord. You're going to send this to Emmy, send this to Beth, send this to Brooke, and then we're going to all approve it and then move forward. Um, we found that wasn't working. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so eventually we were like, all right, shot's going to get done. Film's going to get done no matter what. That was one thing I realized doing this position was <laughs> I had to kind of be the bad guy and be like, I know that this hand isn't working, but the film's due in a week, so we have to make it work. Um, so it was a lot of like, we're going to sit in class, we're going to move through it, but you have to be available for me to bother you 24-7. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was kind of how it worked on our end. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Discord goes kind of crazy. I'm howling at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, on some hard like days when you know you have a long uh, animation workshop, you will be sleeping in the middle of the summer afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, literally, just <laughs> at everyone. Hi. By the way, guys, we missed uh, this. We forgot to design the this part of the character. We forgot to design the, what the inside of their mouth looks like. Can someone please do that so we can color this shot? It's always the inside of the mouth. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> we forgot that, too. Uh, I, I guess it's a common thing in most films, the inside of the mouth. But then in ours, it was also the underside of the paw. What color is the toe bean, Milo? Uh, that's the question <laughs> we had to ask many times <laughs> for several weeks. What color is the toe bean? <laughs> I still couldn't tell you. <laughs> so... So many little things like that keep cropping up, and I'm at color team. Hi, hi guys. But um, yeah, it was it was a bit of a struggle, but that's just the process, I guess. Uh, beyond just asking all of our classmates to be on call 24/7 for any issues that arise, um, in the final third of the semester, I spontaneously came up with uh what I call the green red system <laughs> in class which was uh, we had the spreadsheet that Jill made as PC, and uh, I was doing animation uh, dailies, and uh, we had yellow, green, and red. Like, green is it's done, yellow, we're working on it, red is not started. And uh, I said to our class, all right, now is no longer the time for subtlety. It's red if it's not perfectly complete, and it's green if it's done. And so <laughs> I proceeded to, like, mark the majority of our work, including my own red. Cool. Uh, but we made a fun game out of it. I was yelling, green, <laughs> like red. <laughs> and and uh, when we would finish scenes, we would uh, say in the Discord, like, I'm green now. And then everyone re react with green emojis. <laughs> and uh, that, that <laughs> gamified the completion of our film, and it ended up being kind of fun. When Luke creates Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, um, we, like, there was not, a, like, there was definitely, like, oh, how did we balance uh, work outside of the classroom and work in the, we didn't, like, <laughs> like, it was, it was bad at some points, but um, there was, like, I was really, like, shout out to, shout out to uh, Block B, who's ever in the audience, uh, and on oh, Twitch. Oh, they are. They are. Um, <laughs> and Andrew's over there. <laughs> We got yeah. See, we got. I you're not in Block B. <laughs> you're not even in this major. <laughs> um, but there was like, I was really astounded by like the the like motivation of our crew to get stuff done, even if it was like uh, last minute. I think we have to we have to bring up the Yifei cake incident. We will bring up the Yifei cake incident. So, is, first of all, is Yifei Fung in the audience right now? Is he on Twitch? He's probably he's on probably Twitch. on Twitch. Shout out to Yifei Fung, uh, lead location designer. Um, we had a layout that we were missing for whatever reason. Like, it was just not there. Um, I don't even think we had the location design. Or maybe we did. But, no, um, we didn't. anyways, not there. We needed it. It was, like, a week overdue. And everyone on location de uh, design, again, four people, uh, had a second job that was uh, active that week. 
So uh, the location design Discord channel was absolutely losing their mind. Um, and then Yifei just stepped out of the out of the ashes and was like, I'll do it. And we're like, oh, thank you so much. And like 15 minutes later. Yeah, I was I told Yifei, I was like, hey, it's okay if you can only give, give us like a sketch of the layout right now because we can go in and clean it up later with the rest of your team. Like 20, 15, 20 minutes later, uh, Yifei sends a full sketch of this missing layout. And we go, wow, thank you. Like, that's awesome. Um, we don't really need, like, if you're busy right now, we don't need the cleanup version. Somebody else can take care of that. And then Yifei says, oh, no, cleanup is easy. <laughs> 20 minutes after that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we, we get it, we get and we're it. like, that's amazing. Oh my god, thank you. And he's like, all right, no problem. I'm at a party now. I'm going to go back to the party. And he sends a picture of a slice of cake. The man was at a party the entire time. <laughs> so um, Our team was awesome. I, uh, in terms of organization, what I did was, as production coordinator, I got the job. I went home. I looked at... Um, the sort of spreadsheet templates that maybe I could base my work off of. Um, scrapped all of it. I thought that I could do a better job. I made the best spreadsheet of all time. Um, the it, master it spreadsheet. Really, it really anyway. is good. <laughs> good stuff. Um, and yeah, organized it uh, in multiple different categories. Um, everybody on the Discord as well is very acquainted with, hey, look at the master spreadsheet. Because what you need to know is on there. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like an NPC. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, everybody did a really fantastic job um, in terms of meeting deadlines and just bringing enthusiasm the entire way. Like, in terms of organization, I can do so much. Um, but really, it just took the team's motivation to actually listen, um, which you all did. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I love those stories. Um, so I know that all of you are going into your thesis year next year. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Um, it's not scary at all. Don't worry, y'all no, be it fine. Is. <laughs> uh, but are there any specific skills from this experience that you would take into any future projects or especially projects? Yeah, uh, make spreadsheets. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe don't make your props really complicated and have a bunch of ribbons on them. <laughs> the bat. I'm sorry, Zoe, it's a beautiful looking bat, but like, oh my God. <laughs> Everyone did vote for the bat. Everyone did vote for the, well, I didn't vote for the bat, but I still think it's a cool looking bat. And it was really hard to draw, but it still looks really cool. But yeah, probably, I think for my thesis, I'm just gonna like draw myself back a bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna like throw down, but I just realized, no, oh no. <laughs> Um, I think one thing I learned is to be human with yourself. <laughs> um, a lot of times during this production, I'd be like, all right, guys, we're going to get a million things done this week. And then realistically, life happens. You know, we're still living in a pandemic. Um, and so, like, we have a final product. But the thing is, you still have to pace yourself. You have to be realistic. Um, one thing I learned is, like, during my thesis year, you know, obviously, I'm going to do the most amazing thing that I can do myself. Um, but I also know that life happens and that like that is also important to learning animation because you're not going to know how people walk unless you leave your house and see other people walking um so yeah i don't know i felt like that was also an important thing i learned is like there is a life balance that you have to learn when you're making a huge production as well so yeah i'd say definitely spreadsheets sam and also courtney thank you if you're watching uh, any question I had, Courtney was like, oh, here's a spreadsheet. And I was like, I don't really want to look at so many squares all at once. But thank you, because it helped in the long run. And now I'm very good at using spreadsheets. Also, despite being production coordinator, sometimes it's hard to coordinate your own production. Because you don't have a million people depending on you. So just make sure, give yourself time, give, give yourself space, uh, and use a spreadsheet. Yeah, and another, I suppose, tipperoni for um, making your little film is, uh, yeah, like, be realistic. And if you got to cut stuff, you have to cut it. You got to cut it. 
if you have too much going on, cut it. Too many characters, cut it. Too much story, cut it. You need to make it as simple as you can because even if you think it's like a very basic premise, no, it's not. No, like it, it's always more than you think it is. And then you think, wait, how did we get here? Ah, ah, screaming. Like, um, yeah, and speaking of that. Then uh, it's too late. Yeah, oh, you can't have three banana pans in one film. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got one in there. We got but one in there. Yeah, know, know where you have to draw the line. Uh, I was talking to a friend last semester who does not go to art school for animation. And I was asking him for advice and also telling him about what we were doing. And he told me in a very loving way, um, it's arrogant to assume that you don't need to eat and to rest. And <laughs> all the times that I've pushed myself for an all-nighter or put off a meal made me recognize that was me thinking, oh, I'm above that. I can power through. And it's like, that's not true. And you're actually way better when you do eat and rest. I have those nutrients. Also, um, rely on other people. You can't, you're not a one-man army, even in your thesis. You should be working with other people. Uh, other people are awesome. Other people make your stuff so much better. They really do. Like, driving a one-man ship might seem really, like, cool, uh, but in the end, the films that you saw here today would be nowhere near as good as they are if they were driven by one person. Um, collaboration is the heart of so much creation. That's so true. Because you can drive a car but with one person, but you gotta have someone on aux. That's so <laughs> true. Bridget, I love your tipperoni. <laughs> so true. Oh, those are some amazing <laughs> words of wisdom. Do you have any last advice for... Oh, by the way, are there any second years, rising juniors in the audience today? Ooh. Hey, guys! <laughs> This is going to be your life next year. <laughs> the sophomore sillies next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you have any last advice for any rising juniors um, that may be watching online in the audience for their upcoming year? Know what you want to do. Uh, have a clear plan. And start it before you think you need to start it. Be nice to everyone all the time. <laughs> Real. Real. Pace yourself too. Don't feel like you need to rush every day. Yeah, and um, yourself actually. Yeah. It's not a competition. It's collaboration. And if you want to do a little bit of sneaky uh, talking about the film that you're going to make before we decide what film it is with your roommate, then you should do that <laughs> because it worked out really well. <laughs> make things that make yourself laugh, <laughs> so that when you're working at your little desk. And, you know, you're kicking your feet and drawing. <laughs> you play it back and you go, oh, my God, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> and then you don't cry. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> oh, genuinely, yeah. During production, uh, give your characters funny little names that nobody will ever know. The cat <laughs> in our film is named Arson. The little girl was named Felony. <laughs> the dog is named Bandit. That's true. We never named the driver. He was just angry. angry and Italian. Driver. Angry Italian driver, yeah. Uh, the cop, the main evil cybernetic cop, we called him the thumb because he <laughs> looks like a thumb. The design was actually, uh, it came up because uh, Reed. Reed over, over there. there. Reed over there was drawing on his thumb and was like, <laughs> this looks like a cock. <laughs> and, and the rest was history. My advice uh, is actually the moral of our film, which is uh, have faith that you will flourish in your own way in due time. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Just like our night blooming cactus. That's awesome. Our advice, be careful when drawing animals that walk on four legs. <laughs> oh, man. <For> real. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Our moral of the story, if you want to see the stars, you will see the stars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the moral of our story is don't jitter your critters. <laughs> <laughs> moral of our, the moral of our story is know how to drive a car before you animate one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't fail you your East coasters time. with your no license. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was made by the pe two people from the West Coast. <laughs> 
All right. Um, thank you all so much. I think we have a little bit of time for a couple questions from the audience. Um, if you're in the audience live or if you're in Twitch chat. Um, can't pull up Twitch chat. I'm so sorry. I don't have my iPad. Streaming on YouTube too? Yes. What? We have a YouTube channel, guys. Surprise. <laughs> um, follow it so we can get that fancy vanity URL. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, I'd like to open it up to the floor now. If you have questions in the audience, if you have questions in Twitch chat, drop them in, um, and we'll see how many we can get through. Uh, Nick and Diego are on the sides over here with microphones. Okay. If I'm allowed to ask this question, were there any, like, close seconds for pitches that were about to go happen? Because I'm kind of interested to know. I don't yes. think we don't actually know on our class. Like we right. never, we never found out the numbers. Yeah, Frank never let us know. <laughs> yeah. Same here. In ours, we didn't know the numbers, but whenever we were revealing them, Frank said, "This was a close one. There was only one vote between the films." What is <laughs> up with the discrepancy between the two classes? I learned something new every day. <laughs> there was one vote, and we almost got to do our amazing, amazing Shiloh O'Brien's film, Clown Down, which is now his solo film for this semester. <laughs> Our class came down to a tie vote between uh, Ricardo's idea and Corinne Evans. So shout out to Corinne because she had an awesome sort of uh, like country horror idea. Ooh. And uh, look forward to everything Corinne makes in the future. Yeehaw! We didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was good, though. Yeah. Um, first, I do want to say I'm so insanely proud of all of you guys and like being able to watch everything come together. Thank you. Milo and Ren, you guys should do stand-up because you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I will never be in the shadow of my father. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> very, fu very funny. Very funny. Um, I do want to know what was the hardest part of production for all of you guys, or like what was the biggest challenge that y'all came across? The bat. The bat. <laughs> the biggest challenge for us was um, cutting out a lot of the scene. Real. <laughs> real, real, real. Our animatic was so long, real. Literally, <laughs> I don't know. That's literally just the tip. Y'all. <laughs> like, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Cut it from from synopsis. If it's long, cut it. Do not be like, oh, I can do it. We can, no, no, you can't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we were in like our final week, just about to lock animatic, and we're like, you know what? Let's cut it like in half. And it was just, it was violent times. It was there was blood and gore in that classroom. It was <laughs> insane. So that was definitely a struggle, is trying to get it down to like a good runtime where we could actually do it instead of having to do like twenty five seconds of animation each week for everybody. We got it down to like twelve or something on average, but that was a, that was a crazy time for sure. Yeah, it's like it's important to uh, keep in what's important so the audience knows what the story is. <laughs> exactly, just keep it keep it understandable and like straight to the point. You don't need any filler and like silly hee hee ha has. Whenever it's just you know just just you know keep it keep it manageable. I think for me, time management, just because um, I think. Uh, especially earlier in production when critique was going on for like oh um what should we go with like car designs what should we go for colors like um i think i would just kind of like let like um class time leak into everything else it's kind of like oh critique isn't done yet so i would just kind of go like hours afterwards and i was kind of like that's when i had to learn like okay there's details i need to like let go because like i don't think everyone's going to like notice i have to like not tunnel vision anymore and just for the sake of the team too because just like you don't need that much credit for everything so it, i think that was like my like biggest thing to learn or my thing but how about you yeah uh, i don't know i don't have much to say i kind of had to grab her by the shoulders and be like honey <laughs> it's not gonna get done if we do it like this um i don't know i guess the thing for me was like i had 20 babies now and i had to nurture them <laughs> the whole time <laughs> yeah that's all <laughs> I think one of the hardest parts for our film specifically was we have a time difference. It starts in the morning, ends in like after one dark. Uh, personally, 
I left that up to Luke and Ricardo because every time someone said anything about a background being a different color, I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> um, I was like, I trust you. Is it bluish? Sure. I thought this scene was in the morning, but it isn't. So uh, maybe keep a keep a chart, very extensive chart on what needs to be colored, a certain color, and don't choose a di- whole different color palette for a different type of day. Just put a filter over the character. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's that's real. That's real, guys. Because <laughs> ours starts in the day and then it goes to like evening and then it's night, and that was a whole whole thing of like we had to do. We made two palettes. Shout out to color team for um, the awesome palettes, <laughs> but um, oh god, that was crazy. And then whenever we, all the characters were like, okay, if the cat is black in the day and then he's nighttime, does he stay the same black or does he go kind of bluish black? You know, kind of <laughs> stuff like that. And it was like, oh my god, bro. But um, like, <laughs> just the whole team. I wanna give a shout out, you know, shout out to Izzy Delore because, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so real. Dude, Izzy took on so much of that, like, because whenever we were hacking up that animatic, then all of our, like, backgrounds numbering got screwed up, and he took on such a nice chunk of work of just, like, re-lettering and, like, reorganizing all this stuff. I appreciate it so much. I think about it every day. But, yeah, just, like, night scheme. Yeah, <laughs> back to the color schemes. That was crazy. Yeah, be that, that's a hard thing to keep track of, all the different colors for your props, different colors for the characters and everything. Just don't have a time change. Make them be in a room that's well lit at all the time. <laughs> all right, we have a, twi- a Twitch question from Pixel Was Taken Five. What was the most difficult thing about the project, which you already went over, um, and what would you do differently? I think I'd make a film where the character stays in the same place the whole time, <laughs> and, and maybe doesn't do parkour. That was a challenge. Yeah, same, because we had, like, a whole town. Like, we so, like you know, we're driving around town. I didn't think about the town while I was sketching yeah. it. So Does I was that like, go from one place to another game? Yeah, so I was like, uh, I'm sorry, Alyssa. <laughs> 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 Alyssa was our, um, she designed the map. She made the map for where they go. So I was like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we had 89 backgrounds. <laughs> what? <laughs> You wouldn't notice it goes by so quickly, but if you look at it, every shot is a second long. So you needed a different angle of a car going um, over a hill. Um, yeah, I think, like, cutting back, uh, there was one shot, all the little children, that was uh, 14 walk cycles I had to animate, um, which was fun. It was a good portfolio piece, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, uh, yeah, scaling. Scaling and being realistic, I think, is what I would change, right? Yeah. Scaling in terms of, like, let's not do 89 backgrounds next time when we have three months to do a film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say something to keep in mind is, yeah, having, like, vision. Because whenever you're pitching and reading the script and it says, oh, the cat turns into a lion spirit. Cool. Awesome. Then you're boarding. The cat turns into a ghost. Uh, now, what do you mean by that? Because like, cause you have to figure out what this stuff looks like and how it's going to take place. Because this is like not realism, obviously. It's like complete fantasy. And it's like, how do I make that real? Shout out to uh, the board artists who for, making it <laughs> for making it all like look cool and awesome. And uh, don't forget to uh, do little sketches to like show everyone like what your vision is. Because sometimes it's easier to express your vision through uh, pictures instead of words. Real. At the beginning of the project, uh, me and the other character designer, Cam, we spent... Yeah, shout out to Cam. Yo, Cam! <laughs> we all love Cam. <laughs> um, we worked so hard on making the cactus. We made like six different cactuses uh, with extremely different silhouettes. We, worked, we made three variations of the main gardener and the husband. And... Uh, after working on all that stuff for weeks, then we recognized, oh, there's like, there's like a dozen customers, uh, who were just, uh, neutral blank people on the storyboard, and so uh, it almost became a scene by scene case of uh, everyone got to make their own uh, NPCs, <laughs> and um, so if you notice any references in our film, 
then you are right. <laughs> um, I think this is on the boring aspect, the technical aspect, the part of production coordination that I don't want to talk about because it's miserable. Um, but file organization, um, naming your files, specific things, knowing where to find everything. I tried for the most part to get this right, but uh, one part that I remember did cause issues was um, make sure that in your backgrounds that all of your elements are separated from one another on different layers, label those layers, come up with a system, give it to everybody so they all follow that system so that the compositors don't have to tear their hair out trying to figure out how to separate these things without masking, etc. I get flashbacks. People said there were literally d labels in like three different languages. Yeah. It was insane. So um, something I did. And I only knew two of the languages. <laughs> Something I did was, um, for the most part, for each active team every week, I would go in and make a document um, detailing the sort of specifics of what a team needed to do that week, the sort of guidelines they needed to follow. And I really recommend doing that for each team if you can. Um, and then what I would go back to flesh out more is um, the sort of background and compositing formats. We have a really quick comment slash question on Twitch, and then we can go to the audience question. Um, here's a question from Otto Rosian. What? <laughs> oh, Wait, no. we know that person. Oh, that <laughs> I guess they're that's, a person you guys that's know. That's Axel, right? Um, that's Axel. Here's a question. Who Axel. voiced the very handsome, very amazing, very talented DMV Destruction Boy? Pure talent. <laughs> Pure greatness, genius voice actor, in my opinion. <laughs> I think you all. <laughs> That's <was> Axel. <laughs> if anyone else is a fan of Axel's voice work, you will want to keep an eye out for my solo film this semester, Ooh. where he he plays my main antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you, that's funny. From the audience, uh, someone shouted out, we love you, Axel. Yeah. <laughs> we, we love you. But also, yeah, it's funny because um, in the script, when we were making that character, we called him obnoxious guy. I called him obnoxious guy. <laughs> so, like, throughout the script, it's like obnoxious guy says, or, you know, what he does. So, um, M and Leo, our character designers, um, they came up with the name Gary. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so just to make it easier. And uh, I was thinking for a while, oh, we should have someone voice him. And I was like, who? And Axel. Axel's yeah. 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 Shout out Axel. All right, we have um a question from the audience. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hi. My burning question <laughs> is what's the one thing that you had to cut for time that if you had a little bit more time you would like to include? Thank you. Thanks, Matt. I don't think we had to cut anything. Like a literally anything. There was one shot that unfortunately got finished by uh, Justine. I don't think she's here, but I love you, Justine. Um, that shot got finished, and then Rachel, my, our dear, dear compositor Rachel and I were sitting in my room, as we did for the end of the film, and she, w she and I were watching the cut she just made, and we went, oh, that's a hookup error. <laughs> and so we had to cut the shot, and I had to be like, Justine, I'm so sorry. I didn't, we didn't realize until we put it together, because like boards didn't translate to the harmony files or whatever, but for the most part, our board artists freaking killed it in terms of timing. Oh my god, they were great from the second they made it. <laughs> yeah. I think we had a lot of trouble with, uh, how does a cactus emote? <laughs> Which is a question that we all had to ponder. Yeah. And also, is it stiff? Is this a flexible cactus? Probably not. Uh, so we had to cut some scenes that were a little like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here but uh i think it came across pretty well you know we have the cactus like you know decorating himself very cute um we also had a kiss scene sadly we had to cut it we oh. had to cut a lot <laughs> uh, we cut 25 percent of our film Woo. Um, average numbers <laughs> <laughs> amateur numbers yeah. <laughs> but uh in addition in addition to that kiss scene, when we cut it, uh, a lot of the motivation for cutting it came from the fact that, like, the boards were done before the character designs were done, and Cam and I made a giant cactus, and the boards 
some of the boards were made with the assumption that the cactus was a little guy. So <laughs> the framing of the kiss and then the cactus was underneath them in sort of a like a triangle shape, like looking up. And I was like, uh, the, the cactus can't do that anymore. <laughs> the cactus is taller than both of them. <laughs> So in terms of actual footage that we had to cut, there actually wasn't that much. Um, there were a couple of establishing shots that were like cool sci-fi city things that didn't make it in the final. Um, but in terms of things that we just had to cut from the film in general, originally um, the dog, we wanted it. We wanted him to be a big dog. We wanted him to be like he was gonna be like a like a big dog, like a yeah, real... like a German Shepherd yeah. sized dog. Um, but then we realized that the logistics of having a really big dog in a bag while our character is parkouring <laughs> across the city would probably be really hard. <laughs> and it would be hard to explain how when she opens the bag at the end that the dog isn't just like a pile of... Dog. <laughs> viscera. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> viscera. <laughs> yeah. No, that was... I think that was... That was probably the biggest one because we, yeah. we were really hesitant to do that too yeah, we're like, we were no like, this has got to be a big dog yeah there was a lot that we had to cut that we really wanted in there but i think the thing that i felt like was the most important was like a longer montage sequence that showed uh, like how the house being uh improved and the cat getting more rats and everything and like because that no not Builds up the, uh, to the uh, climax and everything, and also if I kind of felt like it also like estab may establish the relationship between the owner and the cat better. But I guess I I'm hoping we got the point across that the cat and the owner care about each other. Otherwise, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Twitch. Um, from Samo Motion who I think is one of our new faculty members. Hi, Samo. Um, <laughs> and you kids can just list uh, off down the line. Um, Sarvit was mentioned, what computer programs were you working in for your films? Boom, boom. Anything else? Or After Effects and backgrounds were done in Photoshop. Yeah, same for us. Animation yep. and Harmony, like Comp and After Effects, Storyboard Pro. Like, yeah, I think the a lot of the backgrounds are Photoshop too, yeah. We also had uh, one of our prop designers make a bunch of our, or make the two cars in Blender, um, which was like super duper useful um, because you could just turn the angle and be like, this is what the car looks like when it jumps over the bridge. So thank you, Dennis. <laughs> we used Toon Boom for the animation, uh, After Effects for the editing, and Photoshop for the backgrounds, and Toon Boom was, uh, once everyone got on the same level of knowledge of Toon Boom, uh, it was super useful. We got to share the color palettes. We got to uh, use the library to transfer entire animation timelines. And uh, it was smooth sailing once everyone got on the boat. Yeah, we uh, same thing. Uh, Toon Boom for animation, Photoshop for backgrounds, After Effects for compositing, uh, auditions for sound design. I don't know. There's nothing really out of the ordinary. We did have a couple of layout designers use Procreate. But that sounds about as exciting as like a ooh fun fact as like <laughs> you know oh an iPad Photoshop ooh. our uh, our composer Adrian ooh. recorded some stuff on real instruments wow recorded everything on real instruments which as you could say might be considered a program. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, Google Sheets. Yeah, Google Sheets. <laughs> Real. Shout out we Google We do not Sheets. use Excel in this, in this house. <laughs> it costs money. There you go. Were there any other audience questions? Okay. Hi. It's Rachel the Compositor. Hi, um, Rachel. Hi, oh, Rachel the Compositor. Oh. Hi, Rachel. I, I was really grateful to work on this film because it helped me realize that I really, really like compositing. It's kind of like my dream job. It, it rocks. Yeah, it's really fun, Rock, and I right? want to do it for the rest of my life, and I owe it to the film to have learned that. So I was wondering how many of you guys, like, really enjoyed your jobs as coordinators and directors, and, like, it made you realize that that's what you wanted to do, or if you really, really hated it, and you wanted to do anything <laughs> with that. Now, well, why would you ask me that question? 
<laughs> I did not choose to be a director. <laughs> it's basically it's like whoever's uh, pitch one becomes the show writer. So I was basically thrown into that position and I was terrified because I've never really been in like a leadership position before. So I was worried like, am I gonna be too bossy? Am I gonna not be like stand up enough for myself? Am I gonna be like bullying me too hard? I'm hoping I did a good enough job that people were able to tolerate me. <laughs> I liked uh, being the animation director because one of my favorite things in art school so far is when a teacher redlines my stuff and draws on top of it because <laughs> I, I just love being like directly shown uh, what I should do and change and uh, Having the opportunity to do that for a group was really nice. Uh, but uh, the character design experience was so fun with uh, Cam because we both discovered our love of microwaving our characters. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Making a perfect turnaround so that when you play it back really fast, the character just spins. <laughs> it's so fun. Absolute caveman humor, <laughs> but it's so funny. Every single time, I'm like, look at him go! <laughs> Especially the animals. Uh. Um. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That's all I had to say. Um, I came into the, the reason I decided to do production coordination is because I genuinely had literally no idea what I wanted to do in the industry. So I said, I'll take a shot at this. And um, I would like to thank my two younger brothers for preparing me to be the eldest sister to 20 people. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim and Larry, I love you. Um, I think they're watching. Um, but yeah, I think I was kind of meant to do it, <laughs> which is kind of a crazy little feeling. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think there's something so rewarding about being able to like work with people and also understand their circumstances and still make something. Um, I realized like in the process of it, like, oh my God, producing content is really difficult because you want to make sure that not everybody is like crying and screaming uh, um, and, and running around. <laughs> um, but you also like want to make sure it gets done. So a big part of it for me was like realizing oh, there's a part of the industry where I can, like, help people get things done without, like, making them want to die. Um, and, like, that's a real, <laughs> that's a real thought. Um, and I guess, yeah, I loved just making sure, I had the film committed to memory by the time the storyboards were done. I knew, I still remember the background amounts, I know the characters, like, it's just, it became, like, a part of me, which is, uh, it's so hard, like, giving it up, because <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, what do I do with all that information? And it's done. Um, but, yeah. Emmy? <laughs> I agree with Beth. She was a really great production coordinator. She Not only was she very thoughtful and considerate of people, she made sure we finished. <laughs> so she had the personality to be like, okay, we're done. And we'd be like, okay. You know, she has that leadership skill. Yeah. yeah. There's a reason why Beth is a special thanks in our film. <laughs> <laughs> her leadership and helpfulness uh, spilled over into us. You know, we appreciate her so much. Yeah. Actually, me and Emmy are girl bosses of the century. <laughs> 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 we were in sync the entire film. I cannot wait to work with her again, like seriously, <laughs> because I would be like, okay, I'm thinking this. She's like, I was just about to text you the exact same thing. So it was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're, uh, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> um, I guess since I'm on um, with directing, I feel like um, I didn't realize how much less art I want to be able to do because it's kind of like, oh, you're commanding people most of the time. Um, I did do some storyboarding during the film, but at the same time as directing, it really didn't coincide because it was like very time consuming on each end. So I feel like directing in the future, I might want to do it. It's fun. It's fun seeing the product and just, yeah, just getting to see everyone's ideas together. But it's like, oh, I do like drawing. So it's like something to think about. <laughs> just like Luke said, Beth is a probably main reason why uh, hiding in the shadows, Beth, controlling our film. No, Beth is probably one of the reasons like, uh, like Butterfly of effect why our film like finished and was like so clean at the end uh because i had maya class with beth the day after our class and i said hey beth you're pc 
and Beth's like, you don't have a 10-page, 2,000-word spreadsheet about what <laughs> everyone has to do every week? And I said, no, Beth. What? <laughs> and uh, Beth I was like, <laughs> yeah. I get it, Beth. I do, too. <laughs> Beth was like, hmm, you seem to be telling our director, our lovely director, Ricardo, giving Ricardo a lot of tips. Maybe you should be PC, because before this, we had our lovely Tiana as our PC. And so we both PC'd together. And uh, Beth got us back on track without ever being in the class. <laughs> so thank you, Beth. Oh, my gosh. Um, directing is insane and so cool. It was, like, mind-blowing. It's like the feeling you get when someone draws your OC times a billion. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's crazy. Um, I definitely agree with what you had to say, um, like, uh, of, like, I want to draw more. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, wait, I want to. Because, like, afterwards, everyone's putting all their designs on their portfolio, and I'm like, oh, I can put my, oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God, I have the same problem. It's literally the same, I know. Um, but it's, it's, it's amazing, and I'd love to do it again uh, on some bigger project someday in, in the yonder days. Um, and I seriously, like, Ren, you are the coolest producer ever. <laughs> and the fact that we, like, live in the same apartment is really useful, especially at, like, 3 a.m. when we're both, like, getting a snack and we're, like, pointing at each yeah. other like cryptids. It's like <laughs> you, we have our uh, my bedroom over here, and then Mila's bedroom over here, and then we both exit our room looking <laughs> like the most disheveled, like creatures you've ever <laughs> like seen. Wood crawlers <laughs> just like <laughs> staring at each other. Um, but yeah, Milo and I were like in sync. Like uh, the chemistry on this film, and I guess in ge just in general, in terms of just being buddies, yeah, um, was really <laughs> good. Um. For for uh for being the production coordinator, um, doing it even though it was a lot of work, uh, made me realize it's something that I can do successfully, um, and it makes me realize that like I really enjoyed being in a leadership position, um, on this film and moving forward. Uh, not long after the film finished, I decided to, uh, be the DM for a. Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is currently <laughs> ongoing. It's a, it's. I wish this D and D campaign was a podcast, y'all. <laughs> it's <laughs> kick ass. <laughs> um, but yeah, stuff like that. Uh, that and this has made me realize that like this is something I can do. Um, and just sort of having that proof of concept of being able to be in a leadership position, being able to collaborate with other people, um, working with Milo. Like all of it is just proof of concept. Um, and it was, it's just a great thing to know. Mm. Also compositing. Compositing's <laughs> awesome. I did a lot of, I did like a third of the compositing. Milo like stuff. volunteered to composite and then just did a third of all the compositing and it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. He I love post-production. My brain lights up. I love like pre-production. Oh my God. This is crazy. <laughs> our, uh, our editor, Nick and our director, Ricardo did a lot of wonderful editing work in the final week. And it was amazing to see how transformative their uh, After Effects sessions were. Like, amazing final flourishes for us. Wizardry. Yeah. Okay, um, so do we have one more question from the audience? And then one more question from Twitch? And then we'll wrap up the Q&A? Oh, I kind of have um, three-ish questions, but uh, they're short. Don't worry. One? Oh, yeah. never mind. So, um, Quick! Sorry, we're just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh. So more about like your roles. Do you know if the artists specifically um, chose their roles, or were they assigned? Um, every. I mean, I'll just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, the way it worked in Frank's class, at least, was um, everybody would submit their like portfolio and say, "Oh, these are my top two choices or top three choices," and then um, myself. Uh, production coordinator and director Michelle, we went through the li everyone's list and everyone's choices and their portfolios and just assigned it as we saw we thought suited the best. Yeah, same. Uh, was it so the same? Yeah, that's same how sort of deal. <laughs> yeah, so you get to like uh, say what you want, but that doesn't guarantee that you'll get it. And then everybody animates. Everybody did animate. Um. So our last question of our Q and A is kind of a combination of. Question from Jazz Baxter and uh, Jim. Uh, Hi, Jim. Shang Witch. Uh, who could that be? <laughs> <laughs> Shang, watching oh. on Twitch as well. Um, <laughs> can you tell us what film you are working on for your personal film, Ooh. and will we see it in the Undies this year, or are there any other personal works you have planned for the future? 
I'll go. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm working on a personal film right now. Um, it's called Coffee Critters. It's about a man working in... <laughs> no, it's not Critters and Jitters, but Coffee Critters. Um, <laughs> coffee Critters that get jitters. <laughs> critters Extended Universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a man who works in a coffee shop, um, and the fuse is out, so he fixes the fuse but hits the wrong switch, and all of a sudden a bunch of liquid like from milk and coffee comes to life, and they ruin the store. Um, I'm doing it in cross in a blender and 2D because also this year I learned that I love 3D so much. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm very excited. Also, Shiloh, who we talked about earlier, is our main character, is my main character. So, thanks. And Luke, he's an old man in it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so real. Uh, my film is also about a guy who works in a food establishment and the food comes alive. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so, except mine's not a coffee shop, it's a taco stand, and the food comes alive, and they're part of the food mob, and they're evil. Ooh. <laughs> um, oh, you just... Yeah, <laughs> uh, find out I more. also have a, a character, my personal film is also about a character who works in the food business, but his food does not come to life. He He's a high schooler who works uh, as, like, a part-time pizza delivery guy. And he delivers pizza to like the cool kids' house because they're having like a party that night that he didn't get invited to because he's a loser. But then he turns out that the cool kids are vampires, and that's not even the big twist. Ooh! Stay tuned. But we'll save that for later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. Yeah. So um, right now I'm making my uh, we're all, yeah my film is about um, this girl. She's trying to get her little cousin out of the park. But he's not. He didn't. He doesn't want to leave unless he gets a big snack. And um, they have to go through Chinatown to find it. So they're both Chinese American, and the whole just what the story is about um, being second generation um, Chinese American or just the immigrant experience in general, and just trying to manage the language gap. So it's about like the main girl is trying to like speak Cantonese specifically, and it's basically her trying to like come to terms with like, oh, how do I like. Not screw this up. <laughs> Using it. Everyone has such sweet themes. Uh, my film is about chickens. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Yeah. A very round chicken. A very that. round chicken with Those Kirby guys. physics, and <laughs> it's about a girl who is getting frustrated, losing out her favorite video game. She realizes the screen looks a little weird, and suddenly she's in a world filled with chickens, and she turns into a chicken girl, and she has to fight a big buff chicken. And that's what my film's about. <laughs> that kicks ass. My film has a uh, interesting name that I love saying out loud. Uh, the title is Strawberry Blue Horse. Ooh. And Ooh. it is about uh, two characters who are having a duel on a beach while a typhoon is coming in to the beach. And they're fighting because one of the characters wants to open the door to hell. Uh, my film is about three high school-aged furries, a nervous calico cat boy, a Radiohead uh, St. Bernard, and a transfem uh, trans DJ goat, and they all race on electric scooters from their taco restaurant to their school, and they argue about whether or not it's easy for cars to explode. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this film. I may not even finish it in time, but by God, it is going to be the most batshit thing I've ever made. And... Um, <laughs> I, I like I like at yours though. Yours is my film. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, my film follows a guy named Brian, and he's this wretched, depressed college student who sees an ad on television that tells him, "You know what? You can get surgery to make your brain smooth." Ooh. <laughs> and when your brain is smooth, you no longer have to think about anything. And he's like, this is awesome. And he goes and gets his brain smooth. Who, who voices the doctor who, uh, who performs the smoothing well, who operation? Does his is he like, is he like? He, he's very cool. He's very European. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't does know. Does he sound like, like this? <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. What? Oh my God. That's such a coincidence. Uh, watch Smooth Brian coming to the <laughs> Undies. Wait, did I save that my title? No. Oh, Yuzu Scooter. 
That's not as cool as Smooth Brian, I'll do it. <laughs> Smooth Brian coming to the undies. Me and uh, Milo shake hands over the taco film cinematic universe. Literally. <laughs> oh my god. Someone's gonna be able to put like a whole board together with strings attached to every single literally. film in this <laughs> no, third year. Literally, okay, you don't understand. So like me and M have film like not not this M, other M, audience M, other M Zulo. Right. We both have like film uh, films with like anthropomorphic characters in it, and we're like maybe gonna like put Easter eggs in each other's films and like I'm putting Easter eggs in other films for like there's literally an SVA film cinematic universe. Class like yeah, you should do that for your uh, thesis. Just like big old collab, like Spider Verse esque kind of like thing going on. <laughs> Absolute conspiracy theorists just piecing together the thesis. And team. you know what? It's real too. After you watch my film, you'll be able to visit the same website that Brian does and go and get your brain smooth <laughs> in real life. <laughs> I can't wait to get my brain smooth. All right. Um, <laughs> Um, so that concludes our Q&A. Thank you to all our filmmakers. Let's give them a hand. They were amazing. Um, thank you to all of our Twitch viewers that submitted questions. I know I didn't get to everyone, um, but we have a limited amount of time. And I have a couple of shout outs before we leave the stage and start on the encore presentation. Um, so I want to shout out to, I think, Frank who's in the Ooh. audience. He's one of our third year With the professors. With the Looking very comfy and cozy. <laughs> um, I also want to shout out to, I think I saw a couple of parents in the audience. Thank 